Hey everybody, it's Randy with Carchaeology, and I want to share another dune buggy that is here in the lab. I know I've done an awful lot of these, and I apologize to those that aren't into them, but for those that are, this particular Yuma Yellow Myers Manx is a really spectacular example that is well worth sharing. So let's take a look. So this Myers Manx dune buggy is a really pure original example that came to the lab here from Montana. Now its original owner had had it its whole life. Uh, he built it back in about 1968, uh, kept it all these years, and then recently went through it to get it up and running and driving and cleaned up again, uh, decided to find it a perfect home, and he contacted us to help and help we did. So the car has come here to the lab for a little bit of detailing, a little bit of uh, sprucing up, and I've now done that, and we'll be delivering this car in the next couple of days to a fantastic collection up in Los Angeles, uh, a collector that's really into high-quality machines, and this Myers Manx certainly fits that, uh, that mold. Um, what I love about this particular car is that it is original gel coat. Now, these cars, when they were originally built, much like a boat or a, a jacuzzi or other fiberglass project or product, uh, the pigment or the color was actually a part of the molding process. And as a result, if they're treated right, they last very well and are very durable. Now, this one did spend a little bit of time, uh, you know, in the elements, but uh, that original gel coat polished up amazing. And what is really amazing about it is there's no cracks, there's no damage. There's a couple of little tiny chips. I think probably the biggest one, if I can find it, man, I've got to hunt for it. Um, there we go. All right, here's a chip right here in the gel coat. Now I do have the original fiberglass top for this as well. Um, but we've decided to leave it off because the cars are just so much more fun as an open vehicle. Now, I wanted to show a couple of details to teach people um, what to look for when it comes to a real Myers Manx dune buggy. Now, this one being an early one is what they call a pre tag Myers Manx. Uh, and the story behind that is when Bruce first got started with cranking these things out. Uh, he really didn't realize how many he was going to be making, whether he really did, needed to track them or not. Uh, and I believe it was in March of 68, he decided to start a numbering process and put a tag on the body back behind the seat here on that panel. Now you can see that this one does not have the tag. It does have the Myers Banks registry tag, um, 1033 so it has been authentic authenticated as an original car but it doesn't have the bf myers tag that would be on there if it were a tagged car now there's little details on the pre-tag cars that you can look for um to identify that um that it's the real deal. Probably the biggest thing to look for on any Myers Manx car is up underneath the fenders. If you look for this molded in tube that runs down the length of the body, that support tube uh, is uh, an identifying feature that a lot of the aftermarket or other companies did not do. Um, this one being a pre-tag originally would have had a smaller emblem on it or actually just the bump on the uh, the hood with a foil sticker underneath there but at some point the original owner decided to put the 3d badge on there um, which looks great but the pre-tag cars that little uh, bumped out spot on the hood is a little bit smaller than some of the later ones uh, other details to look for underneath the front dash if you look at where the body comes across what they call napoleon's hat right here uh, this material drops down here a bit and kind of covers over the top of that. Now, a lot of the other brands didn't do that. You'll see it flat across the top. That's an identifying feature. Another one to look for, I'll see if I can get it here, is this metal support bracket for the windshield and dash. Now, it's a flat metal piece here, but up inside, bear with me here, I'll see if I can get it. Oh, 
there's actually a steel structure in there made out of tubing that supports the dash. That's another thing that you don't see on a lot of the other brands. Uh, the dash is made out of ABS plastic, um, and that's uh, something that you see on the early Manxes. On the Manx 2s, they were actually fiberglass and were molded as a part of the hood. Uh, this being the Manx 1 or even the pre-tag Manx, you can see that it's just all plastic. Um, let's see, other details. Oh, there's one really cool one. Hopefully I can show it. Now, I had a visit recently from um, one of the guys that I had worked with Bruce for so many years on uh, building these cars once he came back into business in the 1990s. Uh, and he came out, he's going to do some work on one of the cars for us. But he showed me a detail when it comes to your pre-tag car. Um, that's something that people don't really know about. And hopefully I can show it here. Let me see if I can get the camera down in here. And maybe the lighting isn't quite right. Well, actually, if you zoom right in on that little hole, if you look around that hole, you can see that there's a little rectangular shaped mark around that. Now that was actually, wipe it off here if that helps. There, that little rectangular mark um, there, now you can see it nice and clear. Uh, on the original molds for the pre-tag cars, there was a hole in that spot that Bruce needed to fill for the manufacturing process. And so he put a small piece of tape on that spot. And so the genuine pre-tag cars, if you look real close there, you can see that ghost of that piece of tape. Uh, fun little detail. Uh, in any case, uh, quick walk around here. You can see what's going on with this car. There are a couple of slight modern upgrades. These seats are actually modern seats that are from MP. They call them, I think they're Speedster seat or they're, oh gosh, I'm not sure. But they fit the car fantastic. They're super comfortable. It's a very pure early design. This particular car has a rear deck back here that we had upholstered to match. This was carpeted when it came here into the lab. And the previous owner had built this out of wood and it includes a little storage spot back here for goodies, which is a really cool thing on a dune buggy because there's no glove box, there's no trunk, there's no anything. And if you're carrying anything in this car, it's exposed to the wind and weather. Uh, so this little deal here was, uh, was a real neat invention. Uh, and it came out fantastic. We had a local upholsterer do the, the material here with the pleating to match the seats. Uh, and so when you look back, it really has a fantastic look to it. Um, let's see, other things on this particular car. I believe this car was based on an early pan, possibly oval window era uh, pan. I'd have to look up the numbers to see what's up with that. Um, it does have a widened 15 inch wheel on the back uh, with VW hubcaps. Uh, we did these hubcaps with the painted logo, so it just kind of gives it a little little pump, looks nice. And on the front, these are 14 inch VW bus wheels that are stock width, so they've not been widened. It might be nice to see these a little bit wider and perhaps a more aggressive tread on that wheel. But unfortunately, getting period style tires these days uh, seems to be pretty tough. Uh, the supply chain has been interrupted when it comes to uh, a lot of the classic car tires that are out there on the market. Uh, so unfortunately, we're going to roll with these for now. They are in great shape. And, um, and that's about it. Oh, let's see. Other details on this particular car. This has the original Dietz 820 lights. If you look here, you can see that logo there. Uh, definitely keep your eyes open for these lights when you're out at the swap meets and that sort of thing. Uh, it's rare to find good original ones like this. Uh, and these are pretty fantastic. Um, when they, when the car came in here though, these headlight rings had been painted black to match what he had done to the mirrors and a couple other details. Uh, we stripped the paint off of there, realized that the chrome was a little bit bad on those headlight rings. So we found some replacement rings that would go right on there. Um, let's see other details we did to it. Some mechanical work, check the brakes, uh, did some work with the ball joints or the, um, uh, sorry, King and link pins up front, take a little slop out of that steering, uh, installed functional turn signals, 
here with a cool vintage looking switch. So now it's got all of its proper lights. I uh, did the old cocoa mats in there because that's a cool look. Gives it a bit of a beachy feel to it. Um, let's see. Oh, one more detail on this car that I've not seen on others. This speedometer here is actually from a Type 3 Volkswagen. So like a square back or notch back or fast back. And it gives a really nice clean look to that dash. It's a little bit different than the Beetle speedometer. A little bit smaller. And uh, of course plop dead center there it has a great look to it all you need is your ignition switch you've got headlights you've got wipers you've got a basic shifter your handbrake there are no frills on this particular car and that's what makes it so special uh the originality the overall layout of it this thing has that period perfect original look to it um, that is what collectors are really going for, and the fact that it is original gel coat and in this sort of condition makes it a very, very rare vehicle. So currently in the market today, I'd say this car is probably between fifty to seventy thousand dollars. Now that sounds absolutely crazy when you're talking about a Volkswagen Dune buggy, but but really it's not. So the original pre-tag cars like this are very hard to find. Finding a good, original, unrestored example like this is hard to find. The color, Yuma Yellow, is a fantastic uh, period perfect uh, color for these cars. Um, probably the only one better than this as far as desirability would be the Tangerine Orange, uh, which would match up with uh, Bruce Meyer's personal buggy, Old Red. Um, but this would certainly run a very close second. Um, so anyway, the market is strong for these cars, but they've got to be the right ones. I see a lot of these come to market that have been modified, been modernized, custom paint, different sporty seats in there, big roll cages, goofy lights, funky wheels, big turbo engines, and that sort of thing. And all of that stuff does is reduce the value of the vehicle significantly. So currently, a good average Manx might be... 25 grand if it's a genuine car, but if it's real and right and early like this one in a great color with the great layout, you can double that value pretty easily. In any case, that's the walk around of this Yuma Yellow pre-tag Myers Manx. I hope you learned a little something. I hope you enjoyed seeing this particular buggy. I really wanted to walk around it and capture it so I could refer to these images in this video with future cars uh, to point out some of the details that mean the most when it comes to the Myers Manx. In any case, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't. And if you come across any of these Myers Manx dune baggies, let me know because I have a bunch of buyers that are looking for right ones like this. All right, everybody, take care. Bye-bye.